It's not the first time, but damn did the critics get it wrong with this one. I'm Adam Scott, and this is Wanted Dead. What is it? You see that guy in black? That's their leader. Wanted Dead was developed by Soleil, made up of former Team Ninja members, published by 110 Industries, and released for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC on Valentine's Day 2023. A throwback to the Xbox 360 PS3 era, combining elements of third-person shooters and hack-and-slash games with an insane plot, strange characters, tons of blood, and over-the-top action. Hell yeah! Wanted Dead is absolutely my jam, but apparently critics don't like jam, tearing this game to pieces with a 57 on Metacritic. PC Gamer gave it a 6 out of 10, saying Wanted Dead has all the double-A jank of a PS3 action game wrapped up in a janky 2023 modern gaming bow. The 6th Axis gave it a 5 out of 10, noting weak and unsatisfying gun combat. And IGN gave it a 4 out of 10, saying there are no air combos. Um, I didn't realize games needed air combos for good reviews. I'm sure it was all those air combos in The Last of Us that earned it a 10 out of 10. Okay, so either the game's bad, you know, the whole air combos thing, or maybe, just maybe, the critics got it wrong. Right off the bat, I got strong 80s action movie vibes with its wacky cutscenes, over-the-top characters, and the police chief always threatening to fire everyone. You won't be able to see the light of day once that badge is taken away from you. You play as Hannah Stone, half-disgraced former lieutenant and half-cyborg, a member of the elite Hong Kong police division known as Zombie Unit, a suicide squad-like team comprised of convicts who have their sentences commuted for taking on life-and-death missions. Trying to make sense of the story is a fool's errand. You'll take on a series of missions with different objectives and villains that are all loosely connected. And when I say loose, I mean like your mom. Between missions, you'll explore the police headquarters, completing minigames like The Claw Machine or Rhythm Ramen, <laughs> yeah, feeling like a little bite out of Yakuza. You'll also get to know the other members of Zombie Unit. There's Herzog, a perv with a love for soup. I enjoy life, not the soup. Cortez, the strong silent type and the heart of the team, and Doc, overly serious and not always seeing eye to eye, but always a lifesaver, literally. I really grew to appreciate this world and the characters by the end, even if I have a few gripes. I imagine for many, the story will be take it or leave it. The real draw and most controversial takes are in the core gameplay. Over here, what's good, bitch? Coming from former Team Ninja developers, you're correct to assume this is challenging action, combining hack and slash with third-person shooting, using a variety of weapons from guns and swords to grenades and chainsaws. Every game needs a good chainsaw. You'll navigate the levels, stringing together combos and dispatching waves of fodder enemies. The frenetic action is flashy and mostly an absolute blast, but it's also tough as balls. Balls made of fists and bullets. I knew this was going to be arcade-like quarter-munching difficulty, but damn. Now the biggest issue is in trying to play this game like other character action games. Don't expect Stone to play like Ryu, Dante, or Bayonetta, with flexible systems on top of systems that are designed in your favor to make things easier. Here's what I mean. These games have tons of combos, where pushing any combination of buttons will generally do something cool, often stunning enemies, heck, even in the air, where you can do air motherfucking combos, and you can immediately cancel in the middle of anything to course correct and get an advantage. Now, on the other hand, a game like Dark Souls forces you to commit to each action, sometimes punishingly so, making things harder for you. Wanted Dead sits comfortably in the middle. There are only a handful of different combos and moves, and while you can't just cancel at whim, getting the timing right really opens things up. You have a few simple sword combos, a pistol that acts more like a parry from Bloodborne, a block, and a dodge. Just mashing attack or using each of these separately will feel incredibly limiting, slow, and clunky. But use them in combination, getting your timing right, and it freaking clicks. 
Swing your sword and time your guard just right to cancel the animation, allowing you to instantly attack again. The combat is incredibly flexible and interesting in how the systems interact. You can actually be way more aggressive than you think at first. Now, if you turtle up like the IGN reviewer just trading blows, you're gonna have a bad time. And while it's never easy taking time to truly master, when you start to understand the system, you'll have a lot more fun. By default, you'll only have access to normal and hard difficulty. And if you die enough times, you'll be offered Nikochan mode, which is like an easy difficulty. But even then, don't expect a cakewalk. You'll get more med kits and enemies don't hit quite as hard, but it can still be really tough. Oh, and you'll be branded with the cat ears in this mode. Fucked up. Which I actually kind of liked. Now, you don't actually have to die over and over to get access to this mode. In the main menu, you can enter a cheat code. Yeah, remember when that was a thing? So, if you input up up, down down, left left, right right, it'll unlock. If you know you're gonna suck or get frustrated dying again and again, then you're welcome. I went through on Nico Chan mode for my first playthrough and stepped up the difficulty for subsequent runs, all the way up to Japanese difficulty, which is a hilarious and appropriate title. You're joined in battle by Doc, Herzog, and Cortez, who mostly serve to make things feel bigger than to actually turn the tides of battle, although they'll dispatch the odd enemy here and there, and thankfully, they can't die. The enemies, on the other hand, Oh man, the finishers get a chef's kiss. Mwah. These brutal takedowns are consistently awesome from beginning to end. There are over 50 different execution animations, with some changing up contextually when standing near walls, railings, or at specific locations. Even after hours of seeing decapitations, limb dismemberment, and buckets of blood, you likely haven't seen them all, and you'll have a shit-eating grin each time. As you defeat enemies, you'll earn skill points that you can spend on upgrading Hannah, unlocking offensive and defensive skills, as well as utility like being able to carry more grenades. On a single playthrough, you shouldn't have any trouble unlocking the entire skill tree, so don't spend too much time trying to get a specific build. The skill tree upgrades do make a genuine difference to the gameplay, adding more abilities to your repertoire, and as you pick up gun parts, you can modify how each of your primary weapons perform, as well as change their skins. You can pick up enemy weapons, but will lose them at the end of the levels. Visually, the game has some real sparks of brilliance, but is a bit of a mixed bag. The team clearly had to choose where to put the budget, and for the most part, they made smart choices. Shit. Starting with Hannah, she has a unique look separating her from the droves of action heroines with her beautiful and colorful tattoos down her arm, the augmentations, and the 80s future look of her police vest, ripped jeans, and sneakers. Cops don't wear sneakers. I do. The combat animations and finishing moves in particular are consistently outstanding, making each encounter an exciting powder keg of action. Enemies become literal fountains of blood after being eviscerated, splashing all over Hannah and trailing along the floor, which was a cool little detail. John Woo like debris fills the air, and the lighting at times makes the environments pop. The environments, while visually interesting, rarely offer any unique designs that change up the gameplay and the rank-and-file enemies are copy and pasted throughout each level, with occasional color swaps to indicate their difficulty. Fighting similar-looking enemies in similarly designed environments over and over can get samey after a while. The game's anime-style cutscenes are a definite treat, and are used to explore a bit of Hannah's backstory. The one set in a nightclub is particularly memorable, and is easily my favorite-looking scene and level in the entire game. Hannah's monotone delivery was an odd choice. The lack of inflection mutes how you feel about what she's saying. But I have to say, strangely, she grew on me by the end. Test in our office, we end up picking that trash. Get to the damn point. I'm just saying that we might be on the wrong side here. Oh, shit! A nice counterbalance to the bland dialogue delivery is the music that blasts out as you slice and dice your way through wave upon wave of enemies. It's an eclectic mix of electro, hip-hop, and indie rock. I particularly liked some of the tracks from Stephanie Houston, which is ironic considering she played Quiet in Metal Gear Solid 5. You can play these tracks through a jukebox, which is a nice touch. The 
The performance was great, maintaining solid frame rates nearly the whole time. But if I had a complaint, it'd be the camera gets really messy, particularly in tight spaces. In larger open areas, there's no issues, but the game often funnels you into tight rooms and corridors where the camera loses its freaking mind, causing untold deaths because I couldn't see what was around me. Even if the camera acted right, these tight spaces aren't conducive to this type of gameplay. Take cover. For you completionists, you'll have your work cut out for you getting all 55 trophies, including the coveted platinum. Expect the huge, like killing a set number of enemies in a specific way or with each weapon, completing all of the minigames and nabbing all of the collectibles, which you'll have to do in a single run. The difficulty comes from, well, the difficulty. You'll have to finish the game on Japanese hard difficulty, which demands you understand and master the systems. If you, I don't know, need air combos, you'll hate the harder difficulties. However, after learning how to use the combat system, enemy patterns, and various encounters on a first run, you'll have a better chance of making it through when the odds are stacked against you. Expect anywhere from 8 to 12 hours to do everything. Despite a few minor gripes, there's a ton of fun in this insane world. I'm sure this game won't be for everyone, the story's nonsensical, the voice acting is strange at the best of times, and the combat demands you think differently. This isn't just copy and pasted from some other game. But goddamn if it ain't awesome, sprinting from enemy to enemy, sliding into parry attacks, separating limbs from torsos, and blasting fools in the face before executing them in spectacular fashion. And it's a shame knowing so many won't experience this game because of the low review scores. However, in the end, it's important to acknowledge where the critics were absolutely right. There are no air combos. There's Wanted Dead. If you like what you saw, hit like and of course subscribe. And if you want another game that you haven't played, check out my video right here. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.